Hello and welcome to another Cladisms tutorial. In this video, I will be covering a couple of the essential modding tools needed for Fallout New Vegas and Tale of Two Wastelands respectively. The goal is to hopefully open the door to mod authoring and making it a lot less intimidating to get started out. Hopefully I'll be able to provide you a good entry point to the scene. I will have a bunch of chapters marked out in the timestamps in the description so you can easily jump around to info that is relevant to you. This video in particular, I plan to cover xEdit, xLoadGen, and the GEC extender slash the GEC installation. With xEdit and GEC, I do plan on showing you guys how to make just a simple basic plugin that edits a weapon record. Something simple like that, just so you can get your feet in the water and see kind of what the workflow would look like for creating a mod. I'll also show you a little bit about conflict resolution, but the main priority of my guide is going to be to get you comfortable with these programs and to be a starting off point. So I'm not going to go in depth in anything, but this is just going to be an intro video. Also, the highlights of this video is going to be the description where I have links to all of the wonderful places you can go to learn more about these topics. So I highly recommend you keep a close eye on the description because everything I talk about will go more in depth with links in the description. So let's start off by installing the first modding tool we're going to use here, which is going to be xEdit. So head to the first link in the xEdit category. It will take you to version 4.0.3 of xEdit. This is the current recommended version of xEdit for you specifically with TTW. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same with Fallout New Vegas, but I know that this version will cause the least amount of problems with TTW. Uh, I also have two more uh, links that will be provided in the description. The first one here is for the method, which is all about conflict resolution and the method to making mods work properly. Uh, I highly recommend you read over this as well as I've got a resource link to some more conflict resolution as well as Lively Dismay's Learn to Mod page. To go back in here, you could just click Lessons and view all of the different lessons he has here. So with that being said, let's install xEdit here. So just scroll to the bottom of the GitHub page and download the sseedit.zip. With that downloaded, what I'm gonna do is create a new folder in my modding directory, just so I can hold all of my apps in one place. I'm just gonna go to my C and modding directory. This is where I keep all of my modded stuff. I'm gonna create a new folder called apps. Within here, I'm gonna also create an xedit folder. So follow along with me if you would like. Within the xedit folder, we're just gonna open our downloaded file and we're gonna drag and drop all of these folders into here. With that being done, the program's now installed. All I'm going to do here is rename the sseedit.exe and I'm gonna call it fnvedit. That'll just make it so this loads the following New Vegas variables. So we're gonna leave this as is and we're gonna open up our mod manager of choice so we can run these programs through our mod manager and initialize all of our mods. So I'm using MO2, I highly recommend you use it as well. To add a new executable, you can do it in a couple different ways. You can do it over here in the executables list, but I always just go to here and edit. Let me just remove these old versions so we can set up some new ones. And all you need to do is click on the plus up here and add from file. We're now just going to open the path to our modding apps xedit directory. And we're gonna add in that fnvedit.exe just by double clicking it. So within here, you see it's filled in the binary for you. We are also going to add a couple arguments here. The first one we're gonna do is just dash, I know what I'm doing. What this is gonna do is it's gonna get rid of a couple double confirmations and tutorial messages for you. You don't have to remove this or you don't have to add this line if you don't want to. I just find that it makes the tool a lot more easy to use. I know that's kind of a conflicted statement, but it is what it is. Um, so with this argument, we're just gonna leave it at just this one. If you didn't rename your exe to fnv edit, you also want to add in the arguments of dash fnv and then just click apply. Now, what I also like to do is instead of all of the edits I'm going to be making or all of the cache files uh, going to the overwrite folder in MO2, I like to make its own mod. So let's go and do that real quick. Um, I already have it set up, but if you would like to do this on your own, just right click in an empty space in MO2 and click create empty mod. And then I just like to create a mod called xEdit Output. Click OK to create it. And then this is what it would look like. I just even have a little separator for all of my tool outputs. 
So let's go back into here and add that output. So click back on your FNV edits, and you're going to click this little checkbox that says create files in mod instead of overwrites. And then just type in X edit, it'll pop up. And now all of your files will be contained within there. That way you can keep your overwrite folder clean and keep everything organized. So just click apply and OK. Uh, actually, before you click OK, we're actually just going to clone this a couple times so we can run a different, couple different X edit processes. So just click the plus with uh, FNV edit selected and click clone selected. We're going to call this first one here FNV edit QAC, which stands for quick auto clean. Then you're also just going to add a dash QAC argument to that. We're once again going to create the files in the mod and we'll just do X edit output once again. Click apply. We're going to clone this one as well. And then just uh, name this VQSC for very quick show conflicts. And then we're just going to rename that QAC argument to VQSC, just like that. Create uh, the files in the mod once again, call it X edit outputs. Now everything is going to be set up. So I'll talk about what these each do a little bit later on. We're going to start out with FNV edit. So within the executables drop down list, just select FNV edit, and click run. When the program opens, there's going to be a couple things on screen here. So as you can see, you see all of your plugins, which are your ESMs, ESPs, and you also see little check boxes here that will tell you whether or not they're going to be loaded into the program. So if I didn't want anything to be loaded, I could right click and select none. If I only wanted to load one specific thing and all of its masters, I would just double click on something. You could also shift double click to load a little bit quicker. Um, you could also just enable everything and look at everything all at once. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to make a simple plugin that will basically uh, just be a simple edit to the vanilla assault rifle. By vanilla assault rifle, I mean the Tale of Two Wastelands one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click Tale of Two Wastelands to load Tale of Two Wastelands. This will take a little while to load, so I'll get back to you when this is done loading. You'll know it's done loading when you see background loader finished at the very bottom here. You shouldn't change anything over here until you see that message. What we're also going to do real quick is change a couple settings. So there's a couple things you're going to want for Xedit to work properly. Um, I like to have this remove offset data box checked. And these are all going to be settings that I pulled straight off of TTW's authors talk. They have a pinned message that just shows all of these settings that you should enable. Um, you might want to take the I'm a patron or donor box if you are a patron or donor. It will just remove all of the please uh, subscribe on my Patreon messages. If you aren't a patron, I highly recommend doing so to support the creators here. Um, in cleaning, if you're on TTW, these are the settings you're going to want to use, but uh, other folks, you don't have to worry too, too much about this. Um, the UI settings, I uh, didn't change anything here. I do use the dark theme, which is under UI theme here. So if you want to use that, feel free to. Okay, so click OK, change your theme settings, whatever you'd like to do. And then what we're going to do to create our new ESP is we're just going to come over here to the Tale of Two Wastelands ESM, because that is where the assault rifle is going to be. So I'm just going to double click this or click the plus to open this up here. And the way Xedit works is you can kind of think of it as like an Excel version of viewing mods. You can see all of the files that a mod is modifying uh, within here, and it'll all be nicely categorized for you. So I know that I want to make an edit to a weapon. So I'm going to scroll down to Tale of Two Wastelands, Weapon Records. And then I'm going to expand this box. Now there's a bunch of stuff that's going to show up in a bunch of colors. Don't worry about those. Uh, you can read more about the colors more in the uh, Xedit guides, or you can click the legend button up here to tell you a little bit more about it. But just know that red doesn't mean bad. It just means that it's losing a conflict or winning a conflict if it's like an orange, which is fine. Sometimes you need that to happen. And uh, we'll also talk about what's going on up here. So these little columns here, the first one is form ID, and this is just a number that's going to be assigned to each of your little entries in here, just so you can identify it in the game. Same goes for editor ID. It's just going to be the editor ID used in the game. Now, if you guys are using the, I think it's Johnny Guitar that does this, but the Johnny Guitar plugin, you can actually use editor IDs in the console now. So let's say I wanted to add a, a baseball bat to my inventory in game. Before, you'd have to type in player.addItem and this number right here. But with Johnny Guitar, you can type in player.addItem and then just type in web baseball bat and it'll give you a baseball bat. So that's something pretty neat that is, I guess, useful to point out here. 
and the name category is just going to be what the name is going to be in game. So let's find our assault rifle. And I'm just going to sort this by the editor ID here because I know it's going to be WEP something assault rifle. So I'm going to scroll down to the W's and then at the top, yep, there it is, WEP assault rifle right there. So as you can see, there's two little columns right here. The first one is the vanilla Fallout 3 assault rifle. So if you were to open up Fallout 3, open up the weapons category, you would see this little WEP assault rifle in there. And all of these values are what's going to be in here. So what we're viewing right now is this column right here. This little box or this whole row is this column right here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, we would see this exact same row in the Fallout 3 ESM under weapons. Uh, just because the form ID and the editor ID the same. So let's break down what's happening here just as a as a starter. So you could see there's some new model stuff going on here. This is for some new uh, mods, I believe. Yeah, so this is for the mods. Uh, this is all stuff that TTW introduced. And you can kind of see how stuff is broken down here. I know it's I know, like I said, it's going to look a little scary when you first get started. But if you break it down piece by piece, it's going to be a lot less intimidating. I can promise you that. So I'll just go over a couple of these just so you can kind of visualize what's happening here. When you see the word model, that's what a mesh is. So whenever you see people saying, hey, you're missing a mesh, that's because this file right here is missing. So if you ever wanted to change the mesh for something, this is where you'd go to change it. If you wanted to give a, a weapon a new mesh, you would change it. Well, you'd want to change it in the GEC, but you can do it in here too. And just changing the path. Um, a couple of other things to point out, like the icon, this is just going to be what's in the pit boy. Uh, this is the ammo list. Um, there's also something called form lists, which I'm not going to talk about too, too much, but it's basically just a, a set list of a bunch of different forms that will, you can easily add it to like a list. So if I wanted to add this to the same list of everything else, that's 5.56, <clears throat> the ammo list that is, I could do it just by adding it to the ammo list form list. Again, it's probably not going to make a ton of sense to you, but there's like a repair form list for assault rifle. There's equipment type for small guns. So um, hopefully that covers a couple of these. Like here's the attachments we were talking about earlier. These are the sounds that the weapon uses. So there's the 3D sounds, the 2D sounds, the distant 3D sounds. Um, here's the weapon data itself. So how much health the weapon has. So that's like the repair, basically. Uh, this is how much you sell it for, how much it weighs, how much damage it does, and the clip size. Um, and then there's a bunch more in-depth uh, data down here. So for the sake of my little test plugin, I'm just going to be editing a couple things like base damage and clip size. And the proper way to make edits to mods or the ESMs, like the base game ESMs, is to do it in a plugin so that you're not just messing up the records and you could share it easily without ruining everybody else's game. So to start editing these Tale of Two Wasteland values, but in our own plugin, what we need to do is head up here to the header for Tale of Two Wastelands, right click it and copy as override into. And this is because I typed in I what I'm doing wrong. So I'll show you guys how to type that properly. Uh, but just click yes, I'm sure. And over here, you get three options, new file ESP, new file ESP again, but this one has an ESM flag to it. Then you have new file ESM. You never really want to do new file ESP with the ESM flag. If you're going to do an ESM, just do an ESM, unless you need to have your overwrites in a, in a weird order. So in most cases, you're just going to want to use an ESP unless you know why you need to use an ESM. If it's like nav meshing or character information, stuff like that. So. For this, we're just going to double click on new file ESP. And I'm just going to call this ESP. So this is the name of the plugin itself. I'm just going to call it assault rifle buff. And then, OK. So as you can see, all of the values from TTW were copied over to this list. Now, if I change the damage, I'll just bump it to something crazy like 50. I just double clicked on that. Typed in 50. You can see it came up red. That's because this one right here is losing the conflict and the orange one is winning the conflict. So basically this won't be in the game. This will be in the game. Now I'm also going to change the clip size to hundred just to go crazy. This is just so we can easily visualize what's going on. This is basically just saying, Hey, 
this is going to override all of the settings here and it's going to win the conflict. The reason that this is not red here is because it isn't conflicting with another existing one. So if this was like six or something, this would show up as red and this one would show up as orange. Hopefully I explained that well. So with these very simple edits done, we're just gonna save our plugin. So just head up here and save. And you should only see your plugin in here. If you see the file that you're editing, that means you were probably editing the, uh, the ESC, ESM or ESP itself and not making a new plugin for it. Also down here is the backup plugins button. This is so that you can basically create a backup of before you started messing and saving around. So if you are working on a longer project and you're a little bit into it and you're worried that something you changed might break something, just check this. It won't hurt anything. You could just always back up whenever you want to. It's not going to take any space or ruin your game or anything. So click OK to save your file. See, I didn't get any errors. It just said it's done saving. So we can just close that X edits and it'll close down. Now in our X edit outputs, oh, also make sure you have these enabled so that they actually work. And I think we get an error if you don't have them enabled. You'll see my little ESP showed up over here. So I would like to make a home for that ESP. So I just click open and explorer there so I can see all the files. And I'm gonna put this ESP inside of its own mod. So I'm gonna right click, create empty mod, and we'll just call this assault rifle buff. Okay, so with that, control double click to open up an explorer. And you can just drag your ESP file into here, just like that. Now within MO2, just refresh it so it knows that something changed. You can see this will light up white, and we'll just enable it. You can see my little ESP just showed up down here. So let's head in game just to make sure we see everything that changed. Alrighty, here we are in game. So I'm just gonna find our, let's just grab some ammo, whoops. And then we'll find our weapon. And we wanted the assault rifle. So if we scroll down, here's the assault rifle. And let's go ahead and look at it in our pit boy here. As you can see, the damage has been bumped substantially and our new clip size is 100. If we equip it, we can see that effect. And if we shoot our gun, it's not gonna bug or anything. We are gonna get a whole 100 shots in our magazine. So that's a simple edit that you can make. And we'll go a little bit deeper with the GAC here in a moment. So let's go ahead and close out here and see what else we can do with the GAC. Alrighty, there is one thing I forgot to mention before we move over to the GAC, and I'll just show you guys that real quick. So open up X edits and then shift double click on your plugin to open it real quick. And if you want the GEC to work properly with your plugin, you need to add all of the masters of your plugin manually through XEdit. So right click on your plugin, as you can see, and they have three masters. So we've got Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, and Tale of Two Wastelands. Now Tale of Two Wastelands itself has a ton of different masters. And we need to make sure that all of these are added as masters so the GEC doesn't crash. So right click on the Assault Rifle buff, and then you're gonna to go to add masters at the bottom. And you're just gonna select all of the masters of whatever it is that's already a master to you. So for this mod in particular, I'm doing Tale of Two Wastelands and Tale of Two Wastelands has every single one of these as masters. So add every single one as masters. You can see it's gonna not throw you any errors saying all the masters have been added. And you can save your plugin, all the new masters. And if you click on it once again, you can see all of these populate down here now. All right, let's go ahead and close out, and now we can head over to the GAC. Okay, so sorry to jump in awkwardly like this, but while editing this video, I realized it made a lot more sense for me to just cover the end of X edits in this video rather than just having one large tutorial and split it up into three separate program-based tutorials. So if you'd like to see the GAC stuff that I'm gonna do next is just gonna be clicking the next video in the playlist to learn about the GAC itself. Um, instead of jumping to the GEC in this video, we're just going to cover some topics that I covered after working with the GEC in what would have been this plugin's uh, workflow. So I'm going to show you some things like conflict resolution, just one example, um, what cleaning a plugin does, and how to remove records from your plugin. So if you would like to learn stuff like that, stick to this video. But if you'd like to jump into the GEC, head on over to the next one. Sorry about the awkward transition here, but I figured it'd be the best way to do this. Alrighty, so here we are in game and the conflict I would like to patch here 
is that my uh, I use a mod here that adds this cool blimp to the uh, Lucky 38 surrounding it, and it'll just fly around it. Um, but the conflict is that the world space is going to be changing on the inside there, and I'm not sure which mod does it. Uh, but it doesn't include the blimp, so I need to find a way to patch it in. So let's head inside. Oh shoot, sorry. <laughs> let's just uh, apologize to these people real quick. Let's go inside so I can show you what I mean. So since I am using a bunch of different strip-related mods, uh, the blimp... Oh my gosh, probably should have cleared this up before I came in here, but uh, as you can see, there's no blimp here. And I want it to be here, so let's go patch this and make the blimp show up. So I'm just going to create a save real quick so we can do before and after here. And to do this, I'm just going to run very quick show conflicts again. And I've got a feeling I know which mod this is, but we will find out here in a moment. So I'll get back to you guys when this is done loading. Alrighty, so I found the mod that was adding the blimp. And now I am going to figure out which records records aren't showing up. So as you can see, these red ones here means that they're losing conflicts and they're not showing up at all. And if I expand this a little bit, I can give you some more detail. So as you can see, the things that it's trying to do is it's trying to place this Zeppelin duplicate here and this animated static Zeppelin. So I want both of these to be here. And these are the, the same thing, by the way. I just have a patch that for some reason includes everything. So what we can do here is we can either make edits to the mods, which isn't a good idea. So I could just drag this over here um, or we could create a patch. And what we're going to do is create a patch. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, copy the one that's winning most of the conflicts and copy it as override into. And then we're just going to create a new patch. So scroll down to the bottom and new file. And this is going to be called, uh, let's say, uh, Zeppelin patch. Why not? That way we know this is a patch specifically for the Zeppelin. And what I'm going to do is just drag over. And by doing this, it's going to add the Amaker's Wasteland as a master, which is totally fine by me. So we're just going to say yes. And we're going to drag both these over. Now the Zeppelin should show up in the strip light region. I'm just going to do this for all of these regions because I know that it's missing in all of them. So I once again. I'm just going to copy as override into and then my Zeppelin patch. Oops, actually, we'll do this to the one that wins. So copy as override into Zeppelin patch. And it's going to say, hey, it's going to add these two things as masters. Do you want to continue? Yep, I'm totally fine with that. Since this is just going to be patching my mod list, uh, I am totally cool with having everything being uh, masters. So once again, just copy right as override into. Step one patch on the last one, drag and drop these values, keep on going, selecting the winner and duplicating it and adding a patch. Whoops, so I messed that up there. As you can see, we have NVZ on the bottom, we have NVPOS on the top. And then we'll just do the same thing. So I'm going to do all of these and then I will cut back to you guys. Alrighty, so I just finished adding the last one to my patch here. And to clarify something, once again, you don't want to just, the goal here isn't to make everything that's red green. It's to systematically and carefully choose the overrides that you want to win. So I'm not just dragging these haphazardly. The reason I'm dragging these specific records is because I know exactly what these records are going to do. Uh, if you ever notice like a red, a red conflict that says, hey, this file is not going to load, it's possible that it's intentional. So you don't just want to always drag things forward, assuming that's conflict resolution, because it's not. You want to make sure you're carefully and precisely doing this and not just haphazardly making everything green. So with that being hopefully clarified, we can save our new patch. So I'm just going to exit and it's going to prompt me to save it. And I'll say yes. And that's going to create my new patch. If I head back into MO2, I should see my patch in the X edit output. So I'm just going to create a mod here just because I'm going to want to keep this for later and I'll call it my uh, Zeppelin patch. Obviously, you're going to want to be more descriptive, like for which mods you're patching. But in this case, I'm just going to call it Zeppelin patch. So just open it up and drag your ESP into there. 
Now with my new ESP being enabled, we'll turn this on at five to clear the uh, overwrite notification. And I'll put this right beneath everything that it was causing problems with. So it'll go right here. Um, we just need to launch the game and see if it worked. Okay, so here we are in the strip. And as I can immediately see, our Zeppelin is there, which is awesome. That means our patch worked as it should have. Uh, now, one thing to mention again here is that modding isn't really guesswork. Uh, it could be guesswork in the sense that you don't know exactly what something does, uh, but you don't really want to just be guessing about what you're doing. So the reason I made this patch is because I knew exactly what I wanted to accomplish and how I wanted to do that. So I knew that this specific record here, this blimp, uh, would be what I needed to update. So as you can see, again, I'm gonna show it off one more time. It is going to be here no matter how many times I exit or enter the strip. Now it's not going to be in the same position just because that's uh, that's not shared between the two cells because they're two different things entirely. Um, but yeah, it works out and there's one simple patch explanation. So hopefully that was helpful. And I'll also show you how to quick auto clean. So if you're a mod author in particular, quick auto cleaning is going to be an invaluable tool to you. It will remove anything that isn't intentional and something that was just a, a dirty edit or unused, uh, identical to master, stuff like that. Um, and you can read more about what quick, quick auto clean actually does on the X edit websites. Uh, but just know that before you release your mods, you should always quick auto clean them just to clean up anything that shouldn't be there. Basically, this is like uh, undeleted references and things like that. So we're going to clean up our, uh, our auto rifle buff. There's nothing too really clean in there, but we're just going to clean it just to show you what cleaning looks like. So have your mod enabled and launch the quick auto clean option. And we'll just double click it and it will clean our mod for us and it'll tell us what it did. So now that it's done loading, it will tell me that it's, uh, it's removed some identical to master records, processed nine of them and removed none of them. So it didn't actually remove anything. Um, <laughs> And here's the undeleting and disabled references. That's, uh, as you can see, there's nothing that needed to be done. So nothing was done, but uh, you should always quick auto clean and see exactly what's going on. So just to break down again, what Xedit is doing here is I can see the cell. So the cell is where I placed the assault rifle. And if I expand all this stuff, it'll show me placed object, wacky assault rifle. And it'll tell me uh, that I placed it. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, if I scroll down, it'll show me the X, Y, Z coordinates for where it is. If I expand my my weapon records, I can see my wacky assault rifle in here. And it's got all my new little settings in here. Alrighty, so that is the end of the X edit intro. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about how to work with the program and some of its functions. That was the goal of this video. So let me know if I didn't accomplish that in the comments below. Um, the next thing we're going to do is work more with our assault rifle buff plugin and the GEC. So if you'd like to see a couple tips and tricks, a little bit of an intro for the GEC, I recommend clicking the next video in the playlist. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what else I could do differently, or if there's anything else that you recommend can help other beginners with the GEC, please leave it in the comments and I will add it to the description. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.